Uh, this is a proactive effort to actually stay out ahead of some of the violations that we see on the daily, no matter how major or minor. Look forward to coming to these, as we call them outreaches, and we're basically reaching out to the company, trying to brief them on safety issues and some of the common violations that we see on the side of the road, right. uh, stressing the importance of driver professionalism, stressing the importance of safety, obviously, and uh, doing a pre-trip, checking for violations before they even get out on the road. Looking at you know, hoses, I'm looking at exhaust, just making sure there's nothing that's jumping out at me as a violation. I'm also checking this brake chamber, making sure that A, it's on there good, not loose, there's nothing missing from it. Common violation I see is uh, oil leaks. And we understand the truck's gonna leak a little bit, but if I open this hood and I look under there and it's dripping on the ground as I'm talking or as I'm doing the inspection, that's a significant oil leak. Okay, that's something's gotta be fixed. If I see if I see the oil here, I'm gonna say engine compartment underside of engine bay, extensive oil leak actively dripping on the ground. That's if it's dripping on the ground. That's how I write it. Right. Yeah, which they do have so many it, drops per. Um, I mean, if it's if it's covering all this right here, I mean, I'll still put an oil leak, but I won't put it as drip on the ground. Oh, right. They're saying, hey, this is something that either A, y'all need to fix, or B, if it's been fixed, you need to clean it off so it doesn't look like it's a continuous oil leak. Okay. So, so technically, it's not a fail. Uh, let's say through a DOT inspection point, let's say here. Uh, if you do have the oil in the engine and it's not dripping, technically it's not a violation. It's not a failure okay. or, re, or a You're, DOT. Let me, let me clarify this here. It's the, the inspection stuff is not pass or fail. It's either a violation or it's not a violation. Okay. And then it's either out of service or it's not out of service. Right. So far, everything I've been kind of talking about has not been out of service. Okay. okay. Now, if I check this brake, it shot out to two and a half or three. Right. And that's outside. an issue. Or if I look down here and there's oil all up underneath the friction material, right. I, and that's the problem. That right. right. Uh, but as far as it being a fail, I mean, I guess you consider it's failing because it's not going anywhere. It's got to right. get fixed. But we don't, that's not how it's rated for us. That's okay. not how we do it um, as far as pass or fail. Where I measure the chamber size and the push rod, I'm going to basically do the same thing under here for the brakes, okay? We'll make sure the driver's got his brakes released. We'll check the chamber size. I can look at these and tell they're 30s. They're 30s. They look like 30 regulars instead of long. Yep. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have the driver brake. What I'll get y'all, one of y'all to do out there is when I say brake, just holler up there to him and let him say brake or be able to brake for me. <clears throat> but just like on the front, I'm going to find me a point of reference that's solid. And then I'm going to just come down the brake push rod right here and just find me a zero point. Uh, a lot of officers will mark a spot with like chalk or even a nail. They'll scratch it where you have a point for zero. But for me, I'm kind of going to go with, uh, let's see, I'll go with it right there. All right, break. Break. All right, so that's come out about a half an inch. That's not that bad. As he's doing that, he's still got the brakes on. We'll just flip right over here and check this. Find me a spot on here. See where that's at. Hey, release. Release. Back about three quarters of an inch, so that's good for a 30, like 30. That's gonna be the same thing on this one up here, the same thing on, on all axles of the truck and trailer. <clears throat> the other things I'm looking for under here, once I get my brake measurements, and again, that's time consuming. Y'all just saw how long it took to do two. You gotta do them two and then two on the truck. So it's, it's a time consuming process. We try to make it as quick as possible, but once I get my brakes, I start looking for other things. Track frames, cross members, any airlines that are chafing, leaking. Make sure all the bolts and stuff are here that are under here are secure and in place. I'm looking at the 
the actual brakes themselves inside the wheels, making sure they're not just rusty or broken or cracked or anything. You can see the tires real well from under here as well. A lot of times you'll find cracked frames right in this vantage point. Just anywhere where you see welds, and like right in here, especially the cross members. Yeah, where there's welds, and just pretty much everywhere you look. You're just looking to make sure the vehicle's safe. And of course, we've got the entire length of the vehicle. So. I'm just trying to, to emphasize that even though I'm explaining it, we're kind of moving fast. This is about how long a normal level one is going to take for, for an officer that's not out here talking and narrating what he's doing. That's about how long it's going to take me to do the actual inspection part. At this point, I'd go back to my vehicle and start typing, looking at logs, looking at the paperwork, checking shipping papers, looking at times, making sure stuff corresponds. So it, it can be very time consuming. With that said, the best thing I can tell your drivers or inform you guys to do is just have your hat in hand because you know this is what I get paid to do and I understand you get paid to, to right. shift them gears we just kind of work together we'll, we'll be a happy couple and go our separate ways when everybody's done uh, the worst thing I can say for a driver to do is and I understand people have bad days but <laughs> when I walk up there and he, he's got his tail on his shoulders and it just makes his life more complicated as well as mine and I got eight hours and I get overtime, so I can take my time and he just be sitting there a while with me. So politeness and, and professionalism goes a long way. You gotta remember you're not just representing yourself, you're representing the trucking company you work for. And if you're not professional with me, how are you gonna be to a customer, you know, that, that's expecting their ship in a way? So and we got a nice note section. I'm not trying to say this is a written thing, but we got a note section, we can type a note section up send that straight to the company before you can get off the side of the road. So it behooves the driver to, to, to be professional because that's what you are, a professional driver. So the ones that, that just continuously have an attitude problem, those are the ones that I'll type a note up real quick. Driver does not represent the company in a positive light. The driver very unprofessional and uncooperative on the side of the road. Email the company, like I said, before I go 10 8 from the traffic stop. Several, uh, several key points that I would like to stress emphasis upon, um, especially with driver behaviors. Just be, be conscious of your, you know, what your actions are. Make sure you wear your seatbelt. Make sure you're not falling too close. Of course, maintain um, discipline when it comes to cell phone use and such like, and stuff like that. Uh, we don't like to see distracted driving. We don't like to see speeding, especially with big trucks. And uh, falling too close is also another major, major problem. Um, the other point I'd like to stress is just, again, I've already said it numerous times, but just have your drivers to, to basically have their hat in their hand. Right. Uh, when we engage them, things go a lot smoother and attitude is everything. Uh, if, if they're having a bad day, they got to kind of suppress that because I may be having a bad day too. So if, uh, if we can just kind of maintain that professionalism, we'll both have a good day and go, go our separate ways in the end.